In this particular lesson, we're going to look at multiplying and dividing fractions. So stay tuned. Now with multiplying, you will be pleased to know that you do not have to make the denominators the same. Do not make or attempt to make the denominators the same. I have been marking papers and I've seen sometimes that students often try to make the denominators the same because they're so drilled into making the denominators the same for adding and subtracting fractions that they continue doing it for multiplying and division of fractions. So please do not worry about making the denominators the same. How do you deal with it? Well, simple, you just multiply across. However, I would like to give you some advice. So see this one here, I'm gonna do it. So three times one, which is three, and then five times six, which is 30. The answer is three over 30, and then you simplify that by dividing by three. So that divided by three is one, that divided by three is 10, and the overall answer is one out of 10. However, I would like to give you a tip, an advice that will make your simplifying job easier. So what you do is, if you look back at the original, you try to compare opposite values. So here, five and one, and, and here you have three and six, and you try to cancel down if they have a common factor between them. Now five and one, they don't have a common factor between them other than one, which it doesn't really count. But three and six, you can simplify. You can divide this by three to give you one, and you can divide this by three to give you two. So you end up with the fraction one over five, let's just write this down, times by one over two. And then you just multiply across. So you just multiply across, giving you one over five times two, which is 10, right? So I'm gonna try to employ this method as much as I can because it makes simplifying the job of simplifying easier. So let's have a look at this one now. We have two, one over seven, times one, one over five, okay? We are gonna convert both of them into a top heavy fraction. So two times seven is 14 plus one is 15 over seven, times by one times five is five, plus one is six, so six over five. Just testing to see if you understand. Do I need to make the denominators the same? No, I don't because I'm multiplying, all right? So I can multiply across, but I will look for common factors. So see here, we've got seven and six, there's nothing in common here, but 15 and five, what we can do is simplify by dividing both numbers by five. If we divide this by five, 15 divided by five is three, and if we divide this by five, we get one. So we are now dealing with the fraction three over seven times by six over one. And then we just multiply across. So three times six, which is 18, seven times one, which is seven. So how many times does seven go into 18? We know that seven times two is 14, so therefore two whole times, and the leftover is four out of seven. So two, four, seven is our final answer. Right, now let's move over to division now. Now with division, division and multiplication work hand in hand. Why? Because division actually ends up becoming multiplication. Now, I want you to remember this. When it comes to division, you change the sign to a multiplication and you flip the second fraction, okay? So what do I mean by this? Have a look at the first question here. We've got two over five divided by two over three. So we'll keep the first fraction as two over five. We will change this sign into a multiplication sign and we will flip the second fraction. This is the first fraction, this is the second fraction. We'll flip it. So instead of two over three, we'll have three over two. And now we just do what we did with multiplying. So we'll multiply across. Um, the two and two here, you can divide that by two, that gives you one. Divide that by two, that gives you one. So you're dealing with one over five, times by three over one. So one times three equals three, five times one is five. So the answer is three over five. Now this one is quite interesting because um, it has a whole number, it has a division, and it has a mixed number as well. Right, first of all, let's deal with this mixed number because we've been dealing with it throughout the video, so let's do that first. So one times seven um, plus two, that gives us nine over seven, and then we have the division, and then we have this three. How do we deal with three? Three can be written as a fraction as three over one. 
and there we have it. So we have 3 over 1 divided by 9 over 7. Now, because it is a division, which will turn into a multiplication, we don't need to have the same denominators, remember that. Okay, so don't worry about converting the 3 uh, over 1 to have a denominator of 7. We make the division sign into a time sign. We keep the first fraction as it is, so 3 over 1, and we flip the second fraction. So instead of 9 over 7, we flip it, it becomes 7 over 9. And then we just multiply across. But once again, before we multiply across, in fact, rather than cancelling down here, I just want to show you this final one that we can um, just multiply across without cancelling and then cancel at the end. Just for fun. So 3 times 7 equals 21, and then 1 times 9 is 9. Now, 9 goes into 21 how many times? It goes in twice. And the leftover from 2 times 9 is 18. Um, so 18 to 21 is 3, so the leftover is 3 over 9. Now, we have to simplify this fraction because 3 and over 9 um, can be simplified by dividing by 3. So we end up with 2, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So the final answer is 2 and 1 third. Now let's apply what we've learned into a common exam question here. All right, so you have a rectangle and you're told that the area of the rectangle is 5 and 1 third centimeters squared. You're told that the length, one of the lengths of the rectangle is 3 and 1 fifth centimeters and you're not given the width. So the width is x unknown. Find the width x of this rectangle. So what do we know? What do we know? We know how to calculate the area of a rectangle. We know that the area of a rectangle is base or length times width. Okay? So we know that. Which of those do we know? We know the area is 5 and 1 third. Oops, let me write that properly. We know that it's 5 and 1 third. What else do we know? Let's write this 5 big as well, because I need that showing up on the board. You might not be able to see it. Right, what else do we know? We know the length. The length is 3, 1 over 5. And we don't know the width, which is x. So let's write the x here. So in order to find x, we will do the reverse operation. So we'll take this 3 and 1 fifth over to the other side by doing the opposite operation of multiplying, which is divide. So we end up with the following, 5, 1 over, 1 over 3, divide by 3, 1 over 5. And that will equal our x. And there we have it. We now have a fraction that we know how to deal with. If we calculate this, we have calculated x, and x is the width of our rectangle. And we've answered the question. So let's do this. Maybe you want to pause the video, try it yourself, and test yourself to see you can do it. And when you're ready, you can press play again. Right, so hopefully you've had a chance to look at this. So let's have a look at this uh, with my blue pen gone. It's gone missing. Ah, found it. Right, so <clears throat> we have five, one third. Let's convert that into an improper fraction, top heavy fraction. So five times three equals 15, plus one is 16 over three. Division, so divide. So three times five here again um, is 15, plus one equals 16 over five. So how do we deal with this? We're going to keep the first fraction, so 16 over 3. We're going to change the division into a time sign, and we're going to flip the second fraction. So we have 5 over 16 instead. Now this time round, I am not going to just multiply across. I want to simplify, okay? So how do I want to simplify? The 16 and the 16, they got commonality. They can both be divided by 16. So 16 divided by 16 is 1. 16 divided by 16 over here is also 1. 5 and the 3, they got nothing in common. So therefore, what I will be now dealing with is 1 over 3 times by 5 over 1. And that's nice and easy because 1 times 5 is 5. 3 times 1 is 3. And my answer is 5 over 3. And the unit, because it's the length that I'm looking at or the cent um, width, it's in centimeters. But have you forgotten one thing? This is an improper fraction and your question has been giving you everything as a mixed number. So please, please remember to change this into a mixed number. So three goes into five, how many times? Once, remainder two over three. So your actual answer will be given as one, two thirds of a centimeter.
I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I hope now you know how to do with all the four operations dealing with fractions, whether that be addition, subtraction, multiply and divide. See you in the next video, guys. Goodbye for now.